Hey guys, Aaron here again, back in the garage. The Lotus Elise is up on the left, and we're doing the rear suspension today. In case you missed it, check out the link over here. I got a full video on the front suspension. Now we're off to the rear. I have a whole bunch of brand new parts from EliseParts.com that we're gonna install. Uh, whole new shocks, replacing all the bushings, all the ball joints, everything to get this thing back to factory fresh. That includes these new Bilsteins for the S2, I'm told, uh, and lots of parts ready to go. So here is the old suspension. It's got some older Bilsteins, but we're gonna replace all the bushings, all the ball joints, all of the old hardware on here. So before we even get started, please give the video a thumbs up because it's gonna be great. Just like with the front suspension video, we're gonna be following the rear suspension steps in the service manual. I'm gonna start off with diagrams and learning some terminology because I don't know what they call all of these parts, like a damper clevis. Never heard of that before. Uh, it looks like it's the bracket that the shock goes on. That's what I would call it. Damper, shock. Uh, top wishbone, we got that one. Uh, the rear subframe, understand that one. The lower wishbone is, yes, obviously the lower wishbone. The toe control link, we have a new one of those that we're going to be replacing. Uh, lower ball joint down here. And the road spring is just the spring that is part of the coilover. Just like the front suspension and all my other videos, this is my first time doing this, so proceed at your own risk. Uh, leave comments down below to help others out. That's the point of this video, is to help others that come along, want to do this job, see what they're getting into, and hopefully help them get through some stuff. So uh, if you have any helpful and constructive criticism, please comment below, help out the next guy. This is the general description of the suspension, if you guys want to pause and read any of that. It does note here that there are components that are shared between the front suspension and the rear, including the top and bottom swivel joints, hubs and hub bearings, and some wishbone pivot bushes. Here is the geometry that it lists, if you wanna set it up like that. I learned about this while doing the front suspension. The way they do the camber is they put these little shims uh, between the hub and this plate here. Uh, the ball joint plinth is what they call it on this one. On the front, this thing was the steering arm. So it makes sense in the rear. It's just simplified. It's just this block here because there is no rear steering. And this here does point out that you should apply uh, some thread lock to the threads on those bolts. So without further ado, I'm just going to start cracking through these uh, disassembly and assembly instructions straight out of the manual. You know that I have my car lifted already and that bottom panel is off and the wheels are off. So I have uh, videos for all of those things. If you want to check out the Elise playlist, you can find how to do that if you don't know how to do that already. This is kind of an important note. It says if you remove the drive shaft from the hub, it will usually result in the hub bearing two part inner race uh, separating and that will cause damage to the seal. So if you're not specifically uh, removing that to replace that bearing, uh, you should take the drive shaft off from the transmission side and leave the drive shaft attached to the hub so you don't have to mess with that bearing. So. If you're doing this job uh, and you do need to replace the bearing, now is the time to do that. All right, anyway, step one with the car up, we're supposed to remove the engine bay under tray so that we can get access to the lower wishbone front pivot. So are they talking about the main under tray that I already removed because this is the lower wishbone and this is the front of the car. So I assume this is the front pivot and it looks like it's got a whole little mounting bracket here. The rear pivot, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take the diffuser off just so we have more access in here. Five eight millimeters along the back and then two T30s. All right, I have been inspecting the lower suspension here and I think I understand how everything works now. 
here on the other side of the bracket you can't reach that but it looks like in the service manual they call it a weld nut so i'm assuming that the nut is welded on in the back there so that you don't have to reach there and you just uh unscrew it from that side uh the lower one on this side uh, i'm going to be replacing all of this and here is the new one right here So uh, what this looks like is it just uh, has a threaded piece of it that goes through all the way through the lower wishbone. This threaded piece goes into the rod up here. So the only thing holding that on is a nut and I can see the nut on the inside. So with a uh, swivel and an extension, I should be able to get through there to take the nut off. So that shouldn't be a problem. My biggest concern is the axle. And they talk about using a special tool to remove it from the transmission. And again, they said not to remove it from here unless you're replacing the bearing. So I don't want to remove that. On the front suspension, I just took the whole hub and everything off and apart just because I could. And it was pretty easy. Um, but on this, one i think my plan is going to be uh like just to remove the top wishbone i'm going to replace the bushing in here i'm going to replace the bushing in here i'm going to replace this ball joint and then i'm going to put it back into place to hold everything uh somewhere along the line i will replace the shock and then i'm going to remove the lower wishbone and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna replace the bushes at the end and this ball joint, and uh, of course this whole rod down here and its ball joints and put it back on and try to leave the hub and axle alone. So that's what we're gonna shoot for. So the very first step is to get our caliper and disc off to get them out of the way. So uh, there are two bolts holding this on to the hub. One of them is right here. This is the line for the emergency brake. So when you pull it, it pulls this thing down uh, to activate your brakes. So the first thing you have to do is make sure your emergency brake is not set. And that should allow you to be able to push down on this because if your emergency brake is pulled it's already all the way down um, you can see hopefully with some light here that this thing is captured in here but there is room over here on the right so if you pull this down you can slide this cable over and up and out around that way uh, we have to disconnect it so that we can push this whole thing back through the hole and out of the way so that we can get to this bolt. And so right before we do that, we need to go ahead and uh, disconnect this. Should be a 10 millimeter nut. This is what holds your emergency brake onto your lower wishbone so that it'll have enough room to be able to get backed out. All right, got the 10 millimeter nut off. Just pull that up and let that stay right there. It's gonna hand tighten the nut back on there so I don't lose it. All right, I'm gonna try to do what I said before. Hold this down. Let's slide this guy around. <laughs> it's easier said than done. My glove getting caught. There we go. Got that pushed around. I can pull this cable through here. Get that out of the way. All right, our brake line is also held on right here by another 10 millimeter nut, so we need to remove that. So we'll have uh, flexibility here when we take off the rotor so that we can hang that somewhere so we don't put pressure 
uh, sorry, tension on that line. All right, so the two bolts are right here is an eight millimeter and up here is a 17 millimeter. Sorry, this is a six millimeter hex. So one of these guys. All right, let me remove this 17 millimeter. There's that guy as a washer. Ooh, it's a very odd looking bolt. All right. caliper is still attached where that top bolt came through I'm trying to figure out why all right so I'm just gonna rotate this up and okay, if I'm working the disc off They came off. All right, I got my bungee cord here. I'm just gonna hook it into one of these holes. And for right now, I'm going to attach it here to the lower uh, this little arm, just to suspend it. Whatever, something like that. All right, now there's no tension on the stainless steel brake line, and uh, we're gonna start with the upper. Now on the left-hand side only, not the right-hand side, you're gonna have a wheel speed sensor. So you'll see the sensor comes down here and attaches, and the sensor reads the little marks on the axle as it rotates, and that's how it knows. Uh, to tell the speedometer how fast you're going. So uh, this is zip tied onto our top wishbones. We're gonna cut that zip tie and remember to put a new one on when we reinstall. So it looks easier just to remove this whole little block here. It's a 10 millimeter. All right, let's get a little washer. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is disconnect uh, this right here. So there's a 19 millimeter nut we're gonna take off and then use our uh, ball joint separator tool to disconnect this from the top of the hub. Uh, not a lot of room to get tools in here. This, uh, just to support down here at the bottom of the suspension just to support it because we're going to be disconnecting it now. Uh, let me see if we can uh, fit this thing in here. Actually, I think this bolt's going to be in my way, so I'm moving this. Two little washers. All right, so that's going to slide between this joint and the bottom piece is gonna go on the bottom of the, th the threads. And I'm gonna hammer this guy in here. try something I am using this thing on the bottom of the suspension to lift the suspension up because I think that's going to put this at an easier angle to get out so pressing our spring but 
it's also making this more parallel to each other. Oh yeah, I think I can get it in further now. Maybe. Just kind of having to tap this because I don't have much clearance to swing. Barely touching the bottom of the threads. Let me raise it a little more. I think you guys at home can see better this way. So this is the bottom of the tool. I'm trying to get it under the threads and I can hit it harder, I have more room on this side. Tighten this and see if it'll do its job. Turns out all that banging knocked it out already. Well, I guess uh, that was done a while ago and I just didn't know it. So let me lower the suspension back down. Here we go, disconnected. So the next step is just to remove the two pivot bolts. So here's the bolt head and a nut over here bolt head nut over here. They should be 17 millimeter. There's a washer uh, on both sides, one with the nut, one with the bolt. Went through like this, and I will be replacing all this hardware. Let's get that started, and I can hold the nut. For wishbone, you can't just pull out now. There's no shims or anything up here, but this is the nasty bushing that we're gonna replace. So for this upper wishbone, you can see that there's a lip on the outside and not on the inside. So with our tool, we're gonna push from the inside out to pull it out that way. Opposite on this side, on the outer side again, there's this, so we're gonna push this way. I am going to use footage of the wishbone from the front suspension to show you guys how to do it because it's exactly the same and it is the same for this as well. So I'll show you how to push those out of here, clean up the wishbone, put your new ones back in, and then we will reassemble. Is a lip here around the inside. That's why you can't push them out that way. You have to push them this way so that that lip will come through. This one, you can see that lip is right here. I have the removal tool. The removal tool came with these two things uh, stacked on this bolt. And I figured out you're gonna remove the big one because the big one fits there. Maybe for installing them, we will need that. I'm not sure yet, but there's a little groove here in this groove actually uh, will go right here so that this can be flush on it. So what we're gonna do for this one, we're gonna put it on the inside like this. We're gonna take our bolt washer, the smaller piece. We're going to insert it through this end of the bush, the outside. We come all the way through the tool and it threads in at the bottom in the middle. So I've got it threading through now. I'm going to tighten it all the way up. It is all the way tight there. You can see the little cutout is holding it in there. And what's going to happen is as we tighten it, it is going to force this uh, metal piece to push on this bearing and push it all the way into this hollow piece right here. So we're just taking a 17 millimeter ratchet and start tightening this down. 
Just gonna flip it over so it goes over the edge like this to make it easier. And then you just tighten it. You will see this piece start pushing against the bush and eventually we'll push it through. And you'll hear it pop a little bit as it starts coming up. And just keep tightening it until it disconnects and then you can pull it all the way through. And there you have it. Now we will unscrew our bolt. And in order to get the bushing out of here, it's stuck in there pretty well. They provide you a little hole in the back to knock it out. So for me, I just took a little Allen key, stuck it in there. It's touching the back side of this bushing and just whack it with a hammer. All right, bearing came right out. So as you can see, it's super easy to remove these things with that tool. Highly, highly recommend it from EliseParts.com. Next up, we want to replace this ball joint. We got a brand new one right here to remove it. I bought this ball joint removal tool also from EliseParts.com. It has a little diagram on here. Um, the really useful thing is if you are doing it with this piece still in the car, you can see that you can do it right now. I could just take this over to a press, I think, and uh, take it out, but let's see if we can figure out how to use this tool. The one step I did not mention in the other one is, for the front suspension is you're supposed to remove this rubber boot before pressing this out. Uh, I didn't do that in my video and it wasn't until like the third or fourth one of these that I pressed out where the tool that pushes it through got bound up with this and I had to use a regular press to press the, that piece of the tool out. So that's why they say that. All right, let's see if I can just follow along from the diagram. It looks like this is the part that goes on the bottom that the bolts thread through. Get this nut off of here. This looks like the top. This fits in here. Like so. Actually, the original bolts had some washers. Let me grab those. Put the washers on first. And, uh -oh. oh, actually, these bolts are too small. Maybe they were for something else. The original bolts are thicker. All right, so I assume we just take turns tightening these. We'll let this hang over the edge. These are 19 millimeter. <laughs> Gotta make sure the bottom is lined up so that this can go through them. starting to come through a little bit. Let me do a little bit of impact gun. Here is our old one out. Now that we've got the lower wishbone completely out, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this thing in the vapor hunter. All right, I'm gonna install a new one of these first. I came with a little bit of silica grease for the bushes. So I'm going to borrow some of that. I'm just gonna put a dab around the uh, rubber boot here so that it slides through the hole and doesn't bind. It just goes back up through the middle. And 
it just goes most of the way in pretty easily. Let me get it started uh, pretty squarely, and then I'm just going to reverse the tool that I used to remove it. So I'm going to put the flat side at the bottom now, the big opening at the top. This threading started. So all we're doing is removing the cylindrical part this time. The groove in this plate actually fits really nicely with the new ball joint. It's going to go back and forth until they are both hand tight and snug. I'm just going to go back and forth and tighten these. Once it's all the way flush, you're done. All right, here is the first interesting part. So this is the bushing that came out. Pretty heavy, all one piece. These are the bushings that I got with the new kit. It has a bunch of these, and then it has a separate bag that has four slightly longer ones. The instructions say those are for the rear lower arm because of the way they mount. Uh, these have these little holes in them and these fit in here very, very loosely. And these are all identical. Um, so it seems like what I'm supposed to do is press one of these in from each side. And if I do that, I can show you that they there's a tiny gap between them because if you put these in, the metal sticks out a little bit proud of them. So I was a little leery about that, but it seems like if I can do this with one hand and they were to be in there like that, there would be just enough of a gap that those pieces would practically touch. But... Uh, as you remember, there was one lip here, and that's how we could press it out. So, replacing these one day, um, I don't know how you would press them out. But that seems to be how they're supposed to go in. So maybe at least parts can, or somebody else can give me some info on how you would get these out to replace them if we press them in like that together other than cutting off this with like a dremel tool or something and then doing the same process but anyway that's the info that I know so I'm gonna try to press these in and you're supposed to put these in dry and the lubrication around here because this part is not supposed to rotate this part is supposed to stay still uh, this part rotates around the middle, so I will be coming back and putting the grease in these grooves along the barrel, along the back side of this, and they say to put grease in these holes here as well. All right, well, let's see how it goes. One of these here, one of these here. I'm going to use this tool again, but I swapped out to use the big end of that. And I'm just going to use the, instead of going like this, I'm just going to turn around and use the back of this so we can thread through and still have a flat surface. Uh, let's see what happens. Oh, the nice thing is I can just turn it by hand. All right. It's all the way snug. I don't know if that's how they meant to use this tool, but uh, that's what I came up with. All right. Then we have the grease. So they say to grease all the inner part, get it into the grooves that they machined. 
specifically to hold grease. They said that if you don't do this, your suspension is going to squeak. So we don't want that anywhere on this where it touches the plastic part. We want to have lubed and I'll lube these holes here. Use my finger to press some into there. Inner part. Right. All right, that is one side done and I will just do this to the whole wishbone. All right, so these bushings seem to be a tiny bit wider than the stock ones. So I'm just trying to persuade this back in. All right, the right side has a little more clearance on the top for me. Using a brand new uh, bolt, washers, and nut. Now they do make a special tool that has a pointed end to help align these things. Another suggestion is to just grind down the tip of one of these to make it more of a point so it will help align the holes. And before the end of this project, I'm going to do that. For now, I'm just using the handle of my little quarter inch ratchet. It's the same kind of uh, deal. Ha. There we go. That actually worked really well. And same for the other side. Then I'm going to drop this back in here. Put the nut back on under here and this nut gets torqued to 55 newton meters. And uh, the two up here on the ends get uh, 45 newton meters. Yeah, this is a tough one because I cannot get a socket on my torque wrench to fit in that gap. So I guess I'm just going to guess based on what 55 newton meters felt like from the front. So I'm not sure. Maybe I'll come back to that. I can get 45 newton meters here though. side not a lot of room in here but just enough there we go suspension is lowered again Gonna move this out of the way and I'm going to move our uh, caliper that we have hanging off of the bottom and hang it off of the top wishbone work on the lower suspension or we can go ahead and uh, replace our strut and I'm the one in charge here so I'm gonna pick strut so I'm gonna just go ahead and remove this take the bolt out from here and the bolt out that is attached to the lower wishbone yank that guy out these should also be 17 millimeters nut and washer off of there. Another nut and washer here. There's no shims or anything up there. All right, let's start with this one. Nut, washer. Nut and washer on this side. 
and this will lift right out. New shocks come with a new upper bracket up here. These are 17 millimeters. Just gonna remove these with the impact gun. This kit came with brand new bolts and washers and the plate can be positioned either this way or this way, I guess, but uh, I'm putting it this way. That's how the old one was. It's gonna apply some Durlac green here. And some thread locker blue for these threads. Start that one in, and this one. I'm just gonna tighten these down to what seems reasonable. I can't seem to find any torque specs for those bolts. So if you guys know, please leave a comment. All right, so just more of the same over here. I'm gonna knock this one off and pay attention to any shims or anything I have in here. Knock this one off, separate that with a ball joint splitter if necessary, and then take the two corners off to remove our lower wishbone so we can do all of the goodness we need to do there. Uh, 17 millimeter again. super easily and you do have a thick spacer and four little tiny spacers and I feel like we're gonna need to support the hub just a little bit here lift him up to relieve some pressure on these components right. he is off this guy is a 19 millimeter. And let's get this tool back in here. Under here. Right. That is how it's supposed to work. So when that popped off, this thing fell down. I had to go back. It's another reason I make videos. So I can uh, remember how to do things and see what happened. So going back to look at the video, this was right up here and uh, popped off. So I'm gonna have to remember to put that back there. But now I should be able to remove the uh, two bolts and bring down this lower wishbone. And this is a 17 millimeter back here again. Bolt with a washer. All right, this is what I worked up to get that nut off over there. I just have a long extension and a swivel joint. Just a little bit. Maybe this would have been easier. All right, cut the nut off. So this should come right out. All right, so this went like this. And lower wishbone is free. So I'm going to change the bushings and the uh, ball joint on this one now. For the lower wishbone, the tool goes on this way, so it's on the inside because they get pressed towards the middle. And definitely buy this tool, it is so freaking awesome. One-handed. Bam. 
again at leaseparts.com i'll have a link to all of the tools and the hardware that i use in this video in the description of this video so check down below if you buy some stuff from release parts tell them help me diy sent you all right so out of this side we pushed the same bearing that is in all of the other wishbones so far and over here on this side, the side closest to the front of the car, it had two bearings in it like this. So it's finally making sense. The kit that uh, I got from Elise Parts, it has um, four of these bearing inserts are longer than the rest of them. And there is a whole bunch of normal ones. So what we're gonna do, for the front ones is we're going to take two of these like normal because these are all the same we're going to press one into each side like we do for everything else but we're going to use one of these larger ones and they're going to go together like that so you can see that it will be should be yes the same size as these bearings so it'll fit right in there like that so go ahead and clean all three corners where we're going to replace stuff. Uh, if you have a vapor honer from Vapor Honing Technologies, use it here. All right, I guess I'm back at the step where I'm going to reassemble my lower wishbone and this guy, but I'm looking at the other side that I have not removed yet. And yes, I can see that little uh, washer, that kind of like a washer that was under this nut that popped off on the other side. And here we can see that there's some washers on top of this uh, large spacer that goes to this ball joint, which goes into the rod, which goes into the ball joint on that side. So here is the old one that is removed. I left uh, these pieces on in the same order that they came off and I have one, two, three, four of these spacers. And I was trying to read in the manual about an older style and a newer style. And this is this should be the older pre-98 style with the washers on top of the spacer. Um, you can check that out in the manual, what it says. But the interesting thing is the rod that I got if I line this side up, it is obviously a lot longer than the one that I took off. So there is still gonna be room to put it here with a little bit of thread sticking out to lock them down. I put these pieces next to each other. They seem to be the exact same size and length. The lock nut on this one is thinner than this so that should help a little bit um so i think i have the old style still uh the manual said that these are replaced with the new style and it had lots of words um but i'm gonna do what i think is right and i'm just going to uh, assemble this thing and make sure that they are all uh, sticking out the same amount so that all of the geometries are as close as I can get them. I'll probably leave this lock nut a little bit loose so that this can still rotate to uh, line up to reinstall and then after it's installed in place I will tighten that down without affecting the length of it. And I'm just going to take this same stack and put it on here in replace of this one. I believe these uh, shims came with this. Um, so that kind of makes me think this is maybe a new one and I'm supposed to do it differently, but I don't know. So if you guys know, please leave a comment and let me know. I can always come back and change things. All right, so I lined them up 
uh, to get them as close as possible, I'm going to measure end to end, measure end to end to end over here to make sure they're exactly the same. But you can see there is very little adjustment left to make them uh, closer to each other. And I will note that this one here is reverse threaded, so you have to rotate it that way to tighten it, which makes sense so that you can rotate the bar and uh, rotating it one way will push both of them out or pull both of them in. All right, after measuring, uh, the lock nut is a 19 millimeter. The bar has a little slot on it for a 17 millimeter. Just gonna tighten this side up. And the length was just over 16 and a half inches on mine from outside of ball joint to outside of ball joint. And you can see I had to extend it out further than my just eyeball estimate. I was uh, pretty far off just trying to eyeball it, so definitely measure there's more thread than I even thought there. So now I'm just going to take this off, swap over this pack over to here, and uh, we'll go with that and reinstall. And I believe the instructions say to uh, put some grease on this shaft because I guess it is going through that bushing that we just replaced to uh, help it be nice and looby. All right, we have our wishbone that is all refurbished now. I'm just going to try to slide this back over where it belongs. Behind you and you. Brake cable out of the way. All right, the right side's going in pretty easily. The left side needs a little bit of persuasion. If you get the left side started first, or the inboard side, it's a lot easier. <clears throat> All right, mostly in there. Got my new bolt and washer for this side. Put a little thread lock on it because there is no nut. It's going into that weld nut. I've still been too lazy to grind down a bolt, but this punch works really well. Putting it in here to line up the uh, hole for the wishbone. Right, the side that goes in does not have a washer, I don't believe, so that it doesn't interfere with this kind of built-in washer that you can put a wrench on uh, to hold in place. So we're going to stick this end in here. And that's what's going to hold our wishbone on. And then attach the nut from the other side. So I'm gonna reach up here by hand and start it. All right, we'll just leave that hand tight for now. <clears throat> Put this back through the arm now. nut up top. Now for the bottom part of the wishbone, I need to put it back in here. Move that around until it fits in. Put our nut up top here. And then we can uh, torque all of these things back down. 
And somebody mentioned in uh, my video on the front suspension that the bushings for the wishbones and stuff should be torqued down with load on them. And if you have the stock rubber ones, I think that uh, might be true because the rubber uh, can bind, but with the bushings that I installed, they don't bind at all, so they're not that kind of bushing. So you can torque them down now. Before doing all the torquing though, I'm just gonna go ahead and take my uh, new Bilstein here, and drop it in, get the bolts started in there, and line it up all at the same time. So we got the uh, new nut bolt and washers to go in at the top. Fender liner is uh, interfering a tiny bit with the nut. Nice new hardware for the bottom. All right, here are all of the torque specs you need if you need to pause the video to check this out. All right, let's go over those torque specs. This one on the upper ball joint to the plinth, whatever they call this thing, is 55 newton meters. Bottom also 55 newton meters. All of the wishbone pivot uh, joints are 45 newton meters. This one is 45 newton meters. The bracket is 45 newton meters. These are for the damper 45 newton meters. The only odd ones are these lock nuts down here on your toe link, and those are 78 newton meters. Now I'm going to put the caliper back on since I did not buy new bolts. They are going into the Vapor Hunting Technologies Vapor Hunter. We're going to make these look like these. Brand freaking new. All right, let me get this jack out of the way. Let's pop a rotor back on. And then we can unhook our caliper here. Put him back on. Bolt restarted. I'm gonna push this in a little bit as I'm uh, getting it on here. Try to get that over the mounting plate. And I got that hole lined up, starting to thread it. And take our funny shaped pin guy and he goes in the hole down here and that should line up with the hole in our plate. Just going to get it started threading by hand so we don't strip it. Just to show you more of a close-up, this is the head of it. This is part of it right here and it goes into this uh, mounting plate right there. All right, when you guys install that lower wishbone, do better than me. And remember that this is supposed to come on top of it and go through here. So I'm gonna have to bend it a little bit. Oh, it's not too bad. Just to uh, stick it back through there. And that little clip is gonna go here. All right, let me draw your attention to the brake caliper to the mounting bracket. The upper one that's bigger is, you get a range, 45 to 50 newton meters, and the lower one, that pin-shaped one that's smaller, is 26 to 30 newton meters. All right, I chose 28 newton meters for that because it was in the middle, and now we're gonna push this back through the hole. Get the neck all the way seated in there and uh, reattach it here. That's pretty easy. Just pull this 
out of the tube some more to get a little extra length. Push this down over the top, hook it around, and now we can uh, move our brake line back here and reattach it with this 10 millimeter. Don't forget the final assembly step of replacing this 10 millimeter to hold our wheel speed sensor block back on here and zip tie it up to the top wishbone to keep it out of the way of the shock. And since you've taken the time to do this, give it a little TLC, clean it up, make it all nice and shiny down here. And that's it guys, I hope you've already given the video a thumbs up, but check out this beautiful new suspension. All of our components are refreshed. You got new ball joints, tie rods, bushings, everything is back together, torqued up and ready for an alignment. So thanks again for watching guys. I think I'm gonna do a DIY alignment on this. If not, I have arranged to take it to a, a guy who's really good at aligning Porsches and he's willing to give this a shot. So either way, I should have a video coming with how to align these things after you do this job. So uh, hit that little bell notification down there and make sure you're subscribed and you'll be notified when that happens. So thanks again for watching guys. See you on the next video.